name is Ariel, and I just want to let you know, Merry Christmas! Yeah, about that. Christmas passed, didn't it? It's kind of strange, you know? It feels like Christmas, it looks like Christmas, but it's not Christmas. But you know what? If you think about it this way, Christmas is like 300 something days away. So it just means that it's Christmas all the time because we can always celebrate the fact that Jesus is the greatest Christmas gift ever. Hey, you know what guys? I got an idea. Well, I know guys, the Christmas tree has to come down, womp womp. But we're gonna play a game. It's called Oh Christmas Tree to keep the Christmas spirit alive. All you need are like 15 cups. And so what we're gonna do is that you're gonna stack five at the bottom and then four on the next row and then three, two, and one. And at the top, you're gonna put a star. So that's the object of our game. We're gonna see who can do it the fastest. I know it's probably gonna be me, so I'm gonna save you the time. So let's see. You guys ready? Let's do it.
Hey, what's up, Kids Life? And today it is time for this month's memory verse, and it comes from Luke 2 11. And it says this Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. All right, Kids Life, I need your help saying this verse again. You guys ready? Here we go. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And it comes from Luke 2 11. Great job, Kids Life. You guys did an amazing job. We can't wait to see you next week. Stay lit. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Pastor Tyler, why are you in the elf costume? Uh, the zipper's stuck. But we're still having fun, right? And, and last week, you got to hear in the story of God sending Jesus the Savior of the world, you got to hear where he was born, that he was born in a place where animals were kept. I don't think it smelled great, but let's check out the next part of that story. Maybe it was a detail you didn't really pay attention to. Let's check this out, and I'll see you in a second. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. When Jesus was born, there were shepherds living near Bethlehem. These men and boys lived outside, keeping the sheep safe from wind and storms and protecting them from wild animals. These shepherds were among the least important people you'd meet, living outside and preparing their lentil stew over a campfire. You, uh, you put enough salt in there? Uh, I'll, I'll add more. Now. We don't know how many shepherds were in the fields when Jesus was born, and we certainly don't know their names, but we'll call two of them Cyrus and Zach. Don't you ever get bored? I'm bored. Mm, time moves slower than a snail with a limp out here. You get used to it, youngin. I'm hungry. Yeah, just you keep stirring that stew. It'll be ready soon enough. Being a shepherd was simple enough. Keep your eyes open. For what? Number one, wolves. Number two, thorny brambles. Number three, ditches and ravines. That's it? That's it. I'm still bored. At that very moment, the shepherds were nearly blinded by a brilliant light. Mutton and mashed turnips. What is that? A brilliant angel appeared, towering before the shepherds. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. The shepherds gaped, unable to say a word. I mean, it seemed impossible that an angel would appear to lowly men like them. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds were just beginning to get their breath back when suddenly, it seemed like all of heaven opened up. A full angel choir appeared, filling the sky. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Then, just as quickly as they had appeared, the angels returned to heaven. The sky dimmed. Stars twinkled faintly once more. The shepherds stood staring at each other, their mouths hanging open. Huh. Are you bored now, youngin? No. Well, then let's do this. Uh, we could just go to Bethlehem? Leave the sheep? Number one, let's see this thing that's happened. Number two, especially since the Lord saw fit to tell us about it. Number three, get moving. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem, not stopping for rest until they saw a light glowing on the edge of town. There. <sighs> Breathless, the shepherds knocked on the door. Boom, 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 boom. A woman opened it. She looked tired, but her face was glowing. Ma'am, um, <clears throat> we've come to see the baby. The baby? You know? The angels told us. Come right in. I want to hear the whole story. Once inside, the shepherds were greeted with a familiar sight. Sheep, chickens, hay, and something less familiar. A tiny baby 
tightly wrapped in strips of cloth lying in the animal's feeding trough. He's so little. Would you like to hold him? The rough shepherds took turns holding the baby, gently as a lamb. The Messiah, the Lord. Right here, with us. When the shepherds finally left, dawn was breaking over the hills. The little town of Bethlehem was waking up. Praise God. <laughs> he sent a savior, a Messiah. Just a tiny baby now, but he's gonna make peace for all of us, everywhere. Everyone who heard what the shepherds said was amazed, and Mary kept everything that had happened in her heart to think about over and over. Okay, so I think it was really cool that, that Jesus was revealed. That means that he was shown to a specific group of people. It wasn't a king, it wasn't, it wasn't wealthy people, it wasn't the president, it wasn't the news, it was a group of shepherds. And well, shepherds weren't really that popular. I mean, they were watching after sheep and not a lot of people knew that they were doing it. And so what that showed was that, is that God sent Jesus not just for a certain type of people, not just for wealthy people, a certain kind of people, but God sent Jesus for everyone. That Jesus is for everyone. And the cool part about that was, is that when Jesus came, he brought hope, he brought joy, he brought love, and he brought peace. And I'm so thankful that whenever I'm looking for peace, or whenever I'm worried that I don't have to be, because Jesus is not only my savior, but he's those things, he's hope, he's joy, He's love and he's peace. Jesus can be your peace too. And so let's take this time and I wanna pray over you and your faith that just like I got to know it, and just like the shepherds got to know it, that Jesus can be our peace. Let's pray. God, I thank you for my amazing friends experiencing this here with me in the lab. God, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you that Jesus is, is not only the savior, but he's our king. And, he brought peace, he brought joy, and he brought love, and he brought hope. So God, help us to remember that Jesus brings us peace, that he brings us joy, that he can be our source of hope, that he's our source of love. And we thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So remember that. Remember that Jesus is for everyone. He brings peace, hope, joy, and love. Let's break into our Imagineer group. Let's look at these questions. I'll see you next time.